What's going on, Mr. Bucks Nation subscribers? And of course, the Bucks fans, man. It's been an awesome year, as he said. Um, the win the Super Bowl honestly felt like a dream. It felt like it didn't even feel real. I still don't think it feels real. I think it'll feel real when we get our rings on, on the 22nd of July. But um, it's going to be crazy, man. Um, we're all very motivated. Uh, we're not getting complacent at all. We're looking to keep working, keep grinding, man. And uh, get back to the ship. We appreciate all the support and love. Go Bucks! Hey guys, what's going on? James here. And in this video today, we are looking at yet another pro football focus rankings list. This time, looking at the top 32 edge defenders going into the upcoming 2021 season. Now, this is going to be a very interesting list. Obviously, you guys know with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, you have Shaq Barrett, you have Jason Pierre-Paul, two phenomenal pass rushers, both in their own right. So let's see where put, uh, Pro Football Focus has both those guys ranked going in to 2021. So at number 32 here, we have Clellan Farrell of the Las Vegas Raiders, former, I believe, number four overall pick. I believe he was the pick right before Devin White and uh, just to kind of I'm not going to talk about every single guy on this list at length but pretty interesting Clellan Farrell um, you know a lot of people were surprised that that pick hasn't really panned out yet but I do think he still is a young guy with a bright future ahead of him at number 31 we have Matthew Judon of the New England Patriots new free agent signing for Bill Belichick at number 30 we have Josh Allen of the Jacksonville Jaguars I expect him to rise up this list uh, probably by next year. He is a very good young pass rusher. Very good. Then at number 29, we have Trey Hendrickson of the Cincinnati Bengals, formerly of the New Orleans Saints. He is now a starter, potentially another Shaq Baird situation where he was a rotational guy for, you know, many, many years, and now he's getting a full starting chance here in Cincinnati. We'll see how he does there. Number 28, Leonard Floyd of the Los Angeles Rams. Number 27, Bud Dupree of the Tennessee Titans. I expect him to go up uh, come next year's list as well. He did have some bad injury luck in recent memory, but he still is a good pass rusher at the end of the day. Number 26, Marcus Davenport of the New Orleans Saints. He is uh, definitely going to have to step up with Trey Hendrickson no longer there. Number 25, Melvin Ingram III, who is right now currently a free agent. He is still very good. I'm honestly surprised he hasn't signed with anybody yet. Number 24, Yannick Ngakwe of the Las Vegas Raiders. That's right, they do have Yannick Ngakwe now. Uh, him and uh, Clellan Farrell will be an interesting combination. Number 23, Trey Flowers of the Detroit Lions. Number 22, Bradley Chubb of the Denver Broncos. Number 21, Eric Armstead of the San Francisco 49ers. And, you know, whenever this talks about edge rushers, by the way, guys, this could be outside pass rushing linebackers in a 3-4 defense. This could also be defensive ends in a 4-3 defense. So keep that in mind. Number 20, Jadavian Clowney of the Cleveland Browns. Jeez, he's kind of fallen a little bit far down this list. Remember whenever the hype, I mean, the hype is still big on Jadavian Clowney, uh, even with the Cleveland Browns, but do you guys remember whenever he was with Houston? I mean, people were saying he's going to be the best pass rusher. I mean, and they had no reason to doubt that. Clowney was coming into the league with basically all the tools, just hasn't necessarily translated 100% into, you know, big sack numbers. But still, number 20 here for Jadavian Clowney. Number 19. Brian Burns of the Carolina Panthers. Number 18, Carl Lawson of the New York Jets. New free agent addition there. Number 17, Montez Sweat of the Washington football team. Number 16, Chandler Jones of the Arizona Cardinals. That's... We'll talk about that in a minute, but I do know he has had some health issues in the past couple of years, but still... Ugh, 16 for Chandler Jones. That's low, in my opinion. Uh, you have number 15, Jerry Hughes of the Buffalo Bills. Number 14, Brandon Graham of the Philadelphia Eagles. Number 13, Zadarius Smith of the Green Bay Packers. Number 12, J.J. Watt of the Arizona Cardinals. Number 11, Vaughn Miller of the Denver Broncos. Number 9, or sorry, number 10, Daniel Hunter of the Minnesota Vikings. Number 11, Vaughn Miller of the Denver Broncos. Number 9, Shaq Barrett of the Tampa Bay 
Buccaneers. Now let's go ahead and read this paragraph real quick. Baird has taken full advantage of the increased opportunity that came with this move to Tampa Bay. Baird graded at a 74.0 or higher in each of his first four seasons with Denver, but he was limited to a rotational role in a group that had talented players ahead of him on the depth chart, which is semi-accurate. Um, I remember I did a very, you know, in-depth, thorough review of Shaq Barrett and basically his career from high school all the way to joining the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And yes, they had DeMarcus Ware. Yes, they also had Von Miller, of course. But you look at some of those other guys. Bradley Chubb was drafted, you know, a couple of years after Shaq Barrett had already been there. Shane Ray was also drafted as a potential replacement after DeMarcus Ware. So instead of starting Shaq Barrett, they drafted Shane Ray. That one didn't work out. The Bradley Chubb one, that one's doing all right for him, but the Shane Ray one, eh, you know, not necessarily having a talented player ahead of Shaq Barrett on that depth chart. Anyway, the point is, is that his starting role with the Buccaneers has resulted in 157 total pressures since 2019, more than any other edge defender in the NFL. So, just because you don't have high sack numbers, by the way, Shaq Barrett, 19 and a half sacks in year one for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, then I believe eight or eight and a half sacks in year number two, you can still be an effective pass rusher without, you know, big sack numbers, okay? Shaq Barrett, eight numbers, still, uh, still a uh, respectable number, but 157 total pressures has pretty darn good efficiency putting pressure on that quarterback. But the four-year extension he signed with the team this offseason was well-earned. I completely agree with uh, a little bit of that. Why well, I, I agree the second part of this. The first part, meh. You know, that part about them having guys uh, in Denver who were more talented than Shaq Barrett. You know, half right. We'll, we'll call it half right. But Shaq Barrett here... At number nine, at number eight, you have Chase Young of the Washington football team. Number seven, you have Demarcus Lawrence of the Dallas Cowboys. Number six, Cameron Jordan of the New Orleans Saints. Number five, Nick Bosa of the San Francisco 49ers. Number four, Miles Garrett of the Cleveland Browns. Number three, Joey Bosa of the Los Angeles Chargers. Number two, TJ Watt of the Pittsburgh Steelers. And then finally, number one, Khalil Mack of the Chicago Bears. So, I mean, really the top four I don't necessarily have a problem with. Maybe even number five. I'd say the top five is pretty solid. Uh, personally, I would probably put Shaq Barrett, at least for right now, I'd probably put him above Chase Young. Have Shaq Barrett at number eight. Demarcus Lawrence, Cameron Jordan. I mean, yeah, those guys are good. I would even say the top seven isn't, you know, too, too crazy. Just put him in whatever order you want, besides Khalil Mack at number one. I mean, honestly, you could probably have TJ Watt at number one uh, if you want it, or any one of these guys, really. The point is, is that I'd probably have Shaq Barrett at number eight above Chase Young. I might even have Daniil Hunter at number nine above Chase Young. I mean, there's, there's some interesting things going on with this list, right? I mean, Chase Young at number eight, that's a pretty high number there. I mean, obviously the big thing with this list is there is no Jason Pierre-Paul. No Jason Pierre-Paul in the top 32 edge rushers going in to the upcoming 2021 season. He's not there. And I'm not saying that because of bias, right? Okay, Shaq Barrett, number nine. Uh, you know, that's a pretty decent spot for him. Maybe you put him up at number eight, but, you know, Daniel Hunter at number 10, Von Miller at number 11. There's some wonky stuff here, say, in the top 11 of this list, but but no, and then obviously Chandler Jones at 16. That's, a, that's an issue, but really, no Jason Pierre-Paul. That's really, really surprising to me. So you're saying that Clellan Farrell of the Las Vegas Raiders is going to be a better pass rusher going into the 2021 season than Jason Pierre-Paul? I don't agree with that. I mean, Matthew Judon, I would say he could probably have similar production to Jason Pierre-Paul. Josh Allen, I think he could have similar production to Jason Pierre-Paul, maybe even a little bit better production, but Trey Hendrickson, we don't know yet. I mean, eh, that one's a bit of a toss-up as well, but I would argue that, I think Josh Allen should be higher, but I would argue that Jason Pierre-Paul should at least be, say, 29 to 32. I mean, these guys are all comparable. I think that he will have a better season than Clellan Farrell going into the upcoming season, so I should think he should at least be at number 32. And it's a weird thing. Like, you know, the Raiders have two players on this list. I believe the um, the Saints have two players. Like, Marcus Davenport? I think that Jason Pierre-Paul is going to have a better season in 2021 than Marcus Davenport, in my opinion. I mean... 
that's just going off of what Saints fans and just what the general vibe of Davenport has been. I mean, Saints fans have not been impressed by Davenport at all. So why are why is there a reason to say that he's going to have a better year than somebody who's already been a very proven, efficient pass rusher in Jason Pierre-Paul? Same thing can be said for Clellan Farrell. It's just... It's confusing, man. I know some of you guys have been critical of some of these lists, and this one, I would have to agree with you. I mean, there's some weird spots here. I mean, the Shaq Barrett one, that's not weird. Chandler Jones at 16, meh, I mean, I don't, you know, Von Miller at 11, you could probably move him up. Daniil Hunter, I mean, Chase Young at 8, I'd probably, I'd still have him in the top 11, just maybe not above Shaq Barrett, Daniil Hunter, and Von Miller. Um... I think the top seven's good, but no JPP, question mark? I mean, come on now. What what are we talking about here? What are we talking about here? I mean, the Raiders got two guys, Yannick Ngakwe. Yeah, he, he should probably be on here, but Marcus Davenport at 26, I don't necessarily agree with that, and Cleland Farrell at 32, I don't agree with that. Both those guys above JPP? That's not even biased talking. I mean, J you can go look at the numbers. JPP is a good pass rusher. So, I don't know about this one, guys. I mean, the Shaq Barrett one seems like it's pretty okay. JPP, he should be on this list in my opinion. So, what do you guys think? Leave me your thoughts down in the comments section below at this list. Again, I know some of you guys have been critical, um, but I do want your thoughts. It's good, healthy discussion. But thank you guys so much for watching this video. Hope y'all enjoyed, and I'll see you all in the next video or the next live stream. But until then, and as always, guys, goodbye for now, and go Bucks.